physician's job. It is the physician's job to bring the body into a state of health. And if you don't have a working definition of what health means, then you can't very effectively get that job done, can you? If you'd like to have some fun, uh, call up, uh, just go to the yellow pages, go do an online search for MDs in your area, and randomly call an MD's office and say that you're a new patient, uh, you just moved to this town, you're looking for doctors in your uh, health insurance, uh, you know, providers uh, network, and you need to uh, have your doctor answer a couple of questions before you decide whether you want to get on board with them. Okay. Uh, question number one: <clears throat> Does this doctor regularly refer to chiropractors, acupuncturists, herbalists, or naturopathic physicians? Just see if they do. Now, in some states, you know, naturopathic medicine is not licensed, so the answer should be no in those states. But in other states, every state, chiropractic medicine is licensed. So if your MD doesn't regularly uh, refer patients to chiropractors, then that will give you some sense of the amount of closed-mindedness that they have. Now, I'm talking about general family practitioners, right? Um, second question. Um, could you please um, email me um, your this doctor's definition of health? Or could you please put the doctor on the line? I just want to know how he defines health. I'd, I'd, I'd like to know what his working definition of health is. Thank you very much. <laughs> and watch what happens. You know, even better, um, tell the people that you're calling that you're recording this information for your... Um, you know, for your archives and because your memory's bad and you, you want to have a recording of this. And as long as they know beforehand that you're recording it, it's all legal schmeagle and everybody's happy. And then I want you to post the responses on Facebook. <laughs> I do. That's what I would like you to do. Um, because, you know, it's all in the... Uh, so this is one way that you can kind of take a look behind the curtains of what's going on here and I would be very surprised quite frankly I, I bet solid money on it that the person that you called up would not be able to give you a sophisticated elegant easy breezy lemon squeezy definition of health and if your medical practitioner cannot define health uh, then they do not know what it is and if they do not know what it is how can they possibly help you to achieve it they can't and this is the biggest delusion that people are under all around the world that their MDs are trained in healthcare. They're not. Your MD, bless their hearts, are trained in disease management. They do not know how to provide healthcare because if they were providing healthcare, our health would be getting better and better and better, but it's getting worse and worse and worse. Autism skyrocketing, Alzheimer's skyrocketing, arthritis skyrocketing, obesity skyrocketing, life expectancy declining, infertility skyrocketing. Everybody is sick all of the time. And the reason that everybody is sick all of the time is because the people that own the show, the people that own the monopoly on medicine in the free world, the MDs, do not know how to define health, nor are they trained in how to help you secure it. And this is the billion-pound gorilla in the middle of the world that nobody's talking about. Well, I'm going to be talking about this, God willing, in the Creek Don't Rise on the Alex Jones Show tomorrow. 1 p.m. Central Time is when I'm uh, scheduled to appear as a guest with Alex. You know, he sometimes he runs late with guests, right? So I suppose sometime between 1 and 1.15 p.m. tomorrow, uh, the 18th day of July, uh, which is a Thursday, uh, that you know I'll be on Alex Jones. And you want to tune into that program because Alex Jones has a big listenership. Alex Jones has a big footprint. And uh, a lot of people have heard about Alex Jones. Hardly anybody's heard about Dr. Glidden, but that's all going to change after tomorrow. So get your people to listen to the Alex Jones Show tomorrow, 1 o'clock Central Time. Uh, listen to my interview uh, with him. 
<clears throat> you can also watch it, watch the live stream, because uh, Alex, like myself, always video casts his radio shows. So this is an important thing to understand, folks. Um, nobody understands it, nobody gets it, and that's why everybody is sick, and that's why everybody is beneath the wheel of physical ailments. Because the medical professionals that we lean on to help us get healthy don't know how to do it. The medical professionals that we lean on to help us get healthy do not how to help us get healthy. They know how to stitch a wound closed. They know how to surgically remove a diseased kidney without killing you. They know how to uh, kill the uh, uh, bacteria that causes uh, pneumonia and gonorrhea and syphilis. They know how to do that. Uh, but they have no earthly idea of what causes chronic diseases. They have no earthly idea what causes heartburn, uh, migraine headaches, asthma, insomnia, arthritis, fibromyalgia, anxiety and panic attacks, post-traumatic syndrome. They have no idea what causes these things whatsoever. Nor is the pharmaceutical industry interested in understanding the causative nature of disease. Because if they understood the causative nature of disease, then they would eliminate the disease and they would be out of a job. Do you get it? Do you get it? Your medical doctor doesn't even know how to cure heartburn. You know, I believe antacids and proton pump inhibitors are either the number one or the number two largest selling drug in the world. Largest selling drugs in the world. Why is that? Because if they were to come up with a formulary that cured heartburn, then it wouldn't be the largest selling drug in the world. Because if you're managing something, you need to take the drug for the rest of your life, and that's good for them, it's bad for you, and it's not just heartburn, it's everything. But nobody has lined it up for the general public like this. Nobody has. I'm doing it. Dr. Wallach's been doing it. I mean, it's really just common sense. You would not go to a chiropractor to have an infected kidney surgically removed from your body, right? You would not do that. They're doctors. They're licensed and regulated doctors, but that's not their thing. Well, nor neither should you bring your body to an MD if you're suffering with a chronic disease, you shouldn't do it because the uh, treatment of chronic disease is not their thing. They suck at it. They're bad at it. They're horrible at it. While we've let them treat chronic disease, chronic disease skyrockets. It's everywhere all of the freaking time. And because it's everywhere all of the freaking time, we have been deluded into thinking it's our fault. There must be some mysterious, genetic, complicated, sophisticated metabolic process that one day the researchers from Harvard University will get on the other side of BS. The only reason that chronic disease is so out of control is because we've taken the wrong dog to the hunt. It's kind of like the MDs are a football team that only has a running game. That's all they've got. They've just got a running game. They've never heard of the pass. They don't know how to pass. They've got a quarterback who can't throw the ball and nobody on the team that can catch a pass. They don't have any running patterns. They don't have any passing patterns. All they do is run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Well, if a football team just ran the ball, where do you think they'd end up at the end of the year in the NFL? Dead last. That's why your MD... Your MD's therapeutics in the United States are the leading cause of death and the leading cause of bankruptcy because they're a one-trick pony. And because they monopolize the medical theater and because everybody is sick and because we've been culturally conditioned to believe that they're the gods of medicine and can do no wrong, we just think it's got to be our fault. can't be the doctor's fault. can't be the doctor's methodology. It has to be something else, right? It's a sophisticated, complicated process. No, it's not. You've drunk the Kool-Aid. You're in the matrix. You're down the rabbit hole. Pick your metaphor. You're wrong. You are suffering from the cultural uh, delusion, the cognitive dissidence, which leads you to believe that the MD is the undisputed owner of the field of medicine and everybody else is a back-of-the-bus quack with substandard training. It's completely 100% incorrect. Your medical doctor is the last person to go to 
if you're suffering with a chronic disease. They are the last person you want to go to because they have nothing for you except man-made synthetic drugs sold to you at an enormous price, the intention of which is not to cure the problem but to suppress the symptom and manage the illness. And, you know, when you suppress symptoms and manage the illness, what happens? I told you about that last week. Another symptom develops because the body is a complex system of checks and balances, and a symptom is generated by the body only in the presence of a stress that the body has been unable to uh, handle. The body experiences a stress, becomes destabilized, and punches out a symptom. Now the MDs suppress the symptom. The body falls further off balance and shoots out another symptom, and so we go until death do us part from the earthly plane of existence. It's a problem because it's everywhere all the time. And when I mean everywhere all the time, I mean everywhere all the time. Call your brother, call your mother, call your sister, call your preacher, call your next door neighbor, call your high school sweetheart. Call everybody that you've ever known in your life and ask them how their health is. Ask them how they're doing. Every freaking person on the planet is sick. Everybody is sick. And the only reason everybody is sick is because nobody knows how to procure health except us. We are the tip of the spear of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition. And medical nutrition is where you need to be. Medical nutrition is what you need to understand if you are attempting to make your body healthy. Because medical nutrition supports and promotes your body's built-in, God-given ability to optimize its structure and function. You can't have healthy bones without calcium, right? Well, where are you going to get your calcium? Where are you going to get the sulfur? Where are you going to get the 90 essential nutrients that your body needs? It's not in the food chain. Because it's not in the food that we eat, we suffer, go bankrupt, and then die. One more reason to fire your MD now. Yeah, yeah, I know. You don't want to work. Too bad. God works. We work. That's just the way that it is. But, you know, if you work, uh, if you love your work, it's not really work, right? I mean, it's an old cliche, but it's true. If you love what you do, then it's not really work. It's just, you know, life. Life with, z with zesto. Is that even a word? It is now. Uh, and so this is why I encourage everybody who's in the listening audience to consider the longevity business opportunity because it's awesome. Um, from a pragmatic economic dollars and cents point of view, uh, it's a really great business model. Hardly any startup costs. Uh, you completely regulate how long you work every day. You get built-in free support. Um, it's great. And the potential is there. There are over 250 people alive right now who, with longevity, have made multiple millions of dollars. Multi-million dollar earners with longevity. How did they do that? By helping their friends and family members, church members, and community members to enjoy a greater state of health. And, you know, that beats a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Get with the person who told you about this radio show. Uh, ask them to explain the longevity of business opportunity to you. And if you came to us of your own volition, um, give us a call. Uh, if you're listening to this on a live radio feed uh, somewhere in Texas or California, then give the radio station a call that you're listening on uh, because they have people who can field your question and uh, give you information about what we're up to. And we're a network. This is a good network, a group of individual business owners all around the world who have hitched their wagon to the Longevity Star and are moving forward, um, spreading Dr. Wallach's message of health recovery through science-based, clinically verified nutrition to as many people as will listen. Um, check it out. Uh, you know, it's a fool who makes a determination about something up or down before they know anything about it. So, for and take me, for example, I had a, some built-in prejudice for 19 years against multi-level marketing. I just I don't want to do that. I'm a doctor. I didn't even know what it was, but I knew I didn't want to do it. 19 years. 
And I finally sat down with Dr. Wallach about five years ago, um, had a heart-to-heart talk. He explained what it was. He explained how it worked. He explained what was required, and he explained what it did. And there was no looking back for me. And I have to tell you, um, I'm enjoying a greater revenue stream now than I ever have in my life. I'm, it's a, I'm enjoying a greater revenue stream now than I ever did as a physician with a private practice. And I've been doing that for 22 years. I've been in private practice for 22 years. <laughs> So I kick myself every now and then because I think to myself, oh, man, where would I, you know, knowing how far I've come in four and a half years, how far, how much further would I be had I aligned myself with Dr. Wallach 19 years ago? I didn't even want to think about that. Well, you know what they say, man plans and God laughs, right? So, and, you know, if ifs and buts were candy nuts, we'd all have a wonderful Christmas if wishes were horses, beggars would ride, right? So, you know, there's no looking back, There's, but there is looking forward. I am encouraging you from the bottom of my heart with both feet planted firmly on the soil of economic soundness, look at the longevity business opportunity. Give it a, a long look and then see whether or not it's something you'd like to get involved with. Look, it's not for everybody. But having a judgment about it before you know anything about it is really kind of a silly thing to do. Been there, done that, and guilty as charged. Don't do what I did. Open your mind. Let people, somebody, a uh, longevity business owner, whoever told you about uh, this radio show, let them explain to you what the business opportunity is. You know, what's required, what you need to do, uh, and then see if that's something you would like to do. And if it is, God love you, because, man, we need the help, right? I mean, honest to God, there was somebody at Starbucks right in front of you in line today. There was somebody at Timmy Hortons or right in back of you yesterday, somebody at the gas station, somebody at the grocery store standing right next to you who went to bed last night praying to God for help because the MDs have let everybody down when it comes to chronic illness. Everybody is sick and suffering. Everybody. So we have a task here. We have a pretty heavy responsibility, and we need your help in carrying the load. You don't even have to know how to spell vitamin to have a successful longevity business. All you have to do is tell the truth and point. That's it. It really is that easy. Get with the person that invited you to this program and have them introduce you to the longevity business opportunity. I'm telling you, there ain't going to be no looking back. Stick around, folks. Terry in Virginia is up next. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You know who that is sneaking around? That's your pharmacist sneaking around. Actually, now your pharmacist is a good guy. Pharmacists only know what they've been trained in. Actually, pharmacists know more about the drugs than your doctors do. Uh, and regretfully, uh, in, when it comes to chronic disease, the MD profession has devolved into basically MDs. Our drug, our pharmacists, who've been trained how to diagnose, and they do that poorly. Because all they do is deliver drugs. I mean, if you took away prednisone and pain meds from MDs, they wouldn't know what the heck to do. Because that's all they do all the time. Oh, you know, anti-inflammatories, pain meds. Anti-inflammatories, pain meds, and the random antibiotic. Often prescribed for all the wrong reasons, which is why antibiotic-resistant bacteria are on the rise. It's not your fault. That's the MD's fault. Because of the willy-nilly, indiscriminate, bad use of prescription medications, right? So remember, it's not the drug. It's how it's used. It's not the gun, it's how it's used. It's not the drug, it's how it's used. The gun line, gun is an inanimate object. It, the gun doesn't do anything, it's how it's used. Well, drugs, how they're used. The way that MDs use drugs? You kidding me? It's, they're the leading cause of death in the United States. So yeah, let's go to those guys for health care. I don't think so. Uh, the medical system does not need to be upregulated, downregulated, managed, massaged, or tweaked. It needs to be abandoned because for chronic disease, it completely does not work, period. Let's go to Terry in Virginia and see what's cracking. Hey, Terry, thanks for the call. You are live. Dr. Glidden. Terry. I've 
Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Thank you for the Pink Panther music, and I really like the way you word things. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cool so, guy. Yes, yes, I am, Terry, and, and we're, we're getting cooler every day, thanks to uh, the efforts of people just like you. What's the latest on your condition? Uh, uh, yeah, I forgot to tell you about some symptoms I hadn't really been paying attention to since 2012 when my mother started getting real sick. Uh, but I was being treated for some uh, low thyroid symptoms oh, back yeah. around, um, started in 2009, you know, and I was being treated off and on by a frugal natural path, you know, that me and my mother frequented. We had to drive 100 miles to see out of the way, but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, she said that I had low thyroid, and I was listening to Dr. Tenpenny's lecture yesterday about iodine and selenium and low thyroid problems. Yeah. And I noticed that I've been having a bunch of the symptoms, such as uh, hair loss, cold feet and hands, fatigue around 2 and 3 p.m., dry feet, cracked fingertips, dry mouth, brain fog, forgetfulness, slow metabolism. Yeah, so, so all of uh, these things are... so. About it. So you're a candidate for, you know, thyroid support for sure. So you want to become an insider and you want to watch the webinar that I did on thyroid because I did a 50-minute webinar that walks people right through what to do in order to give the thyroid a leg up. Now, remember, we don't treat disease. We don't make any claims here. But it's common sense that the human body needs to have the proper nutrition uh, your thyroid needs to have the proper nutrition. Your heart, your lungs, everything needs to have the proper nutrition. And it would be prudent for you to stop eating food that's coming up the works. It would be prudent for everybody to do that. And this is our recommendation across the board. So there's an essential oil called myrrh, M-Y-R-R-H, myrrh oil. <clears throat> you know, like frankincense and myrrh, right, from the, from mm -hmm. the New Testament. Myrrh oil, topically... Um, on the thyroid area is beneficial uh, for the thyroid. Uh, iodized salt is mandatory. Selenium supplementation is mandatory. Um, and also you need to visit a chiropractor and have them do an x-ray of your neck and make sure that the curve in your neck is correct. If the curve in your neck is not correct, your thyroid is not going to be correct no matter how much nutrition is in it. Um, went into more detail about that on my webinar, but um, I would check that out. If I were you, uh, so add some what myrrh about, oil. Uh, what about uh, this thing uh, Alex Jones is talking about and pharmacists being, uh, was it nature's iodine or something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing to do. But remember, iodine is one of the 90 essential nutrients. You don't just need so iodine. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you're already getting it. It's, it's not a bad idea. If you have a thyroid condition to take, or you think you have a thyroid condition, to take extra thyroid, extra iodine, I mean, that's how we eliminated goiter. That's one of the good things the Food and Drug Administration did years ago. They noticed that in a particular part of the United States, there was an area called the goiter belt, where there were hundreds of thousands of cases of enlarged thyroid. And it was pretty serious. And they figured out it was due to an iodine deficiency. So rather than doing 100,000 thyroid surgeries a year, they decided just to put iodine in the salt, and that's how iodized salt came into being. And when they just added iodine to the salt, the goiter went away. It went away. It went away. So, you know, there's direct evidence that iodine is necessary for optimal thyroid function. Um, so it's never a bad idea. If you think or you know you have a funky thyroid, to take extra iodine than what is in the 90 essential nutrients. So, but my recommendation is um, just iodized salt. But you know what the heck? Give the nascent iodine a run for a month or two and see if it makes you feel better. Uh, because there's nothing like the taste of the pudding. Uh, you know, and the proof is in the eating, right? Uh, yeah. Now, would that have anything to do with uh, the lumps in my breast? Could iodine problem? Yes, it could. It's entirely possible that those two things are interrelated. But I'm telling you, you need to get that diagnosed so we're not guessing. Because well, if this but... if this is a big bad voodoo daddy, you the sooner you know about it, the better your chances of survival are. What about a thermography? 
No, thermography well, isn't going to. Yeah, nope. It's not going to tell you whether it's a, a cancerous <clears throat> lesion or just a benign, you know, fibrocystic nodule. What about the Navarro urine test? No, I'm, that's, that's interesting. I'm not that familiar with it. Um, I only have a tangential experience with that, so I can't speak to that. I don't know. If it were because me. I can't find a lady doctor who uh, is into what, you know, you recommended off of that site. Mm. There's none around except for one, and she's like 100 miles away, and then this other doctor. Well, then you got to. not take my insurance. Yeah, so you got to fall back to plan B then. You just have to find somebody local who can do a biopsy so you know. And I'm telling you, the sooner you know, the better. Because you yeah, need well, to know what the hell it is. See, I'm just scared of them. Well, you should be more you should be more frightened of dying from breast cancer than you are of the biopsy. Let me tell you. Um you need I'm to know what both. Well, I would be too, but you know, we have to kind of pick our battles here. Um I'm telling you, get the biopsy. That's my advice. Um because you need it to would... know what you're dealing with and that's the only way you can know. I, I um, won't have the money till the third, is that soon enough? Well, you know, I'll do that urine test in the meantime and see what happens. I mean, I don't have any experience with that, but, you know, knowledge is power, and whatever you can do to dial this in as soon as possible is a good idea. Yeah, well, it will be back by the 3rd, you know. Well, check it out. And get the money. Check it out. And let me know what you find. I appreciate your phone call, Terry. have to move on from Virginia to Toronto. Oh, David called back about um, hyperbaric chambers. Hey, David, thanks for the phone call. You are live. Hey, uh, the other day you asked me to call you back about the hyperbolic chamber, but I, I wanted to ask another couple of questions. Shoot. Yeah, go now, ahead. I've, I've got the... Uh, now, what is the, a more economical... I'm doing the healthy blood sugar pack. Yep. I've called you before and told you it reduced my blood sugar, my A1C from 10.1 in January to 6.1 <laughs> at the end of uh, April. Now, just right there, David, that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that type 2 diabetes is not genetic. Oh, yeah. Because if you could... If you can manipulate your blood sugar levels with a nutritional intervention or any type of intervention, then the disease is not genetic, right? As a matter of right? fact, I've, I've just been in the hospital for two weeks, and, and they took me off of the sugar list, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really great uh, news, man. Okay, go ahead. Continue. Didn't mean to interrupt. I wanted to know, what is, is there a more economical way to do the... The healthy blood sugar pack, and I've been doing the Ultimate Daily and the Selenium. Now, you suggest I go to 12 Ultimate Dailies to help the circulation in my legs and feet and so on. Now, uh, is is there a, a more economical way uh, to, to get the 90 essentials and to... Yes, there is. It's called the Ultimate Classic Pack. The ultimate classic pack. So the recommendation for you would be one ultimate classic pack. How much do you weigh? Uh, well, I'm, oh, I'm just under 200. So. All right, so you would do two, um, two ultimate classic packs, um, two bottles of Sweeties, and two bottles of ultimate daily capsules a day, a month. Uh, and, and by the way, I know you told me before, but I do like that liquid osteo FX better than the powdered stuff. I know, right? I know. You know, I don't like to say it out loud too much because longevity gets mad, but I don't care. I like it better too. Well, it, it's it's better tasting, better texture, easier. Yeah, and I think uh, what what uh, we're finding from just with I mean without even asking, just people are calling in and telling us that they have a better experience with the liquid than they do with the powder. Now, that's not everybody. There are some people that absolutely love the powder and they have a good experience from it, but um, I've never known anybody to have a bad experience from the liquid as far as, you know, clinical results go. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm with you 100%. Yeah, now, so right, now, right now I'm doing uh, two, uh, two heaping containers in the morning of the powder, and then at night I do two 
liquid cap pools. Yeah, yeah. So the if you switch it up from the uh, from the Healthy Start pack to the Ultimate Classic pack, excuse me, um, then that would be a much more economical way. You may need to add one bottle of liquid calcium to that program. So it would be two Ultimate Classic packs, um, one uh, Beyond Osteo FX uh, liquid calcium, and uh, uh, two Sweeties and two Ultimate Daily Capsules. Now, because of your leg condition with lack of circulation to your legs, right? Yeah. A hyperbaric chamber for you would be a good thing to do. Um, especially with the medical nutrition that you have. Now, the hyperbaric chamber, for those in the listening audience, it's the same thing that they put divers in who have the bends, right? It's, it's a little, uh, it's a little uh, a chamber that you get inside of, and they, they pump it filled with oxygen, and they increase the, the pressure of oxygen inside. So it's forcing oxygen through the skin into your circulation. And for people with circulation issues like you, this is a really good adjunctive therapy to do for a couple of months to give your body a leg up, pun intended, on circulation from the outside while you're helping to support healthy circulation from the inside, which is always a process, not in a, never an event. So that'd be a good thing for you to check out, David. Uh, give it a run for its money and let me know what your experience is. I appreciate your support. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Where does the time go? We're winding down the first hour already. I know. What's up with that? Let's go to California and talk to Gary. Hey, Gary, thanks for the call back. You are live. Thanks, Dr. Gooden. Uh, Diane and I talked to you yesterday about her uh, uh, brain situation with her daughter. And she oh, had yeah. a couple of situations that she thought she should have mentioned to you. So, Diane, go ahead. Hi, I was calling um, back again because um, I had told you that she um, had preeclampsia, high blood pressure, and all that stuff, but she has no signs of that anymore. She's not on any type of medication. The only thing she's taking right now is the heparin shots because she's immobile. So um, I w had heard something about the, the um, something, a product you guys have about putting oxygen back into the body is that something she could use well she has an anoxic brain injury yeah no i understand that anoxic brain injuries are caused by circulation issues they're caused by circulation uh -huh. issues circulation issues are okay. caused by nutrient deficiencies so okay. putting more oxygen into her body is kind of like painting over the mold on the wall, you know, you're not going to smell the mold anymore. You're not going to see the mold anymore. And for a while, things are going to get better, but it doesn't get to the root cause of the problem. So it would okay. not be the first thing that I would think about. And the fact that historically she had eclampsia, you know, because you, you can't get eclampsia unless you're pregnant. You, you can't get that. I mean, it could, that, that condition is only present in, uh, you know, women who are with child. Um, but uh -huh. It it uncovers, the eclamptic condition during pregnancy uncovers a greater nutrient deficiency, which until that time had remained hidden, which is not enough calcium. So okay. if, she, if she had not enough calcium during pregnancy, she still has not enough calcium. It's just harder okay. to see, right? So... Um, so in any event, the recommendation stands um, that I gave yesterday. Um, you know, you can give her the oxy body drops if you want to. There's no harm and no foul there. But I would I would follow my advice, um, you know, to the letter yesterday, and and I think that that's going to be sufficient to the cause. Uh, we've seen a number of people, uh, you know, come out of a coma um, uh -huh. on on medical nutrition, and it can't be placebo. Right. I mean, it can't be placebo. They're in a coma. So uh -huh. um, I think you're going to you're going to have a very positive experience of her health once her body gets all of the raw materials it needs to optimize its structure and function. So keep your fingers crossed and call us back. Why don't you with uh, with a report? I certainly would look forward to that. 
Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. Thanks, and thank, thanks Gary. Fantastic. Yeah, you call me anytime, Gary. I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, New Mexico's up next. Kathy um, has a question, I think, about sarcoidosis. Hey, Kathy, uh, thanks for the call. You are live. Hi, Dr. G. It was good to see you in Anaheim. Yeah, um, I know, I right? Have, How are you? Yeah, I was, that was great. I'm very, doing well. I've got a friend, though, that's uh, very ill. I'm going to be seeing her this weekend, try to get her on the product. Um, best guess from the doctors, sarcoidosis, fibromyalgia, and was just in the hospital <laughs> for 10 days with cellulitis and on an antibiotic IV and 15 yeah. different drugs, which I can't even remember them all. I mean, so don't you just love that? Yeah, yeah. you pay medical insurance premiums your entire life. Mm-hmm. So hoping against hope you don't get sick. But, you know, it's it's your insurance policy, literally, for when you do get sick. And so you finally get sick, and you go to the people that you've been paying your whole life to gain access to, and they have no idea what it is. Isn't that just great? Yeah, so I want to help her because they're killing her right now. Well, you know, but it, it, under, it, it reveals a greater tragedy here, which is the incompetence of conventional medicine before the fact. I mean, they're incompetent. They don't know what causes it. They can't make a definitive diagnosis. She has strong and persistent symptoms that warrant hospitalization, and they have no idea what the hell's going on. I mean, you would not stand for that type of behavior in any other profession. We would yeah. not, but we, yeah. we, we give the MDs a pass. Oh, you know, whatever. I, I don't get why we do that. So um, the recommendation here is... Uh, the Anti-Aging Healthy Start Pack Original Formula, one Anti-Aging Healthy Start Pack, two Selenium, uh, and two Liquid Glucogel Plus, uh, and one Immortalium. Uh, one Anti-Aging Healthy Start Pack, two Selenium, two Liquid Glucogel Plus, and one Immortalium per 100 pounds of body weight per month. Eliminate the 10 bad foods and have an eye towards 100,000 antioxidant ORAC points a day go down the hatch. 100,000 ORAC points a day down the hatch. Have her give that, take that out for a ride. She's going to love how she feels. Hour two coming up, folks. Stick around. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Peter Gwynn here. You're a steadfast advocate for health. FYI, I am a licensed naturopathic physician. I completed my Bachelor of Science in pre-med at the University of Massachusetts in 1987. Secured my naturopathic doctoral degree in 1991 from Bastyr University in Seattle. I became licensed to practice naturopathic medicine in 1992. Uh, which means I have 25 years of clinical experience because in naturopathic medical school you start working with patients in your sophomore year. That would be September of 1988. So since uh, September of 1988 I've been working with patients. Uh, I've been licensed to practice medicine and have been uh, holding down the fort with uh, uh, front trenches, private practice in naturopathic medicine since 1992. So I know of which I speak. I have a lot of clinical experience here. I've been around the track with uh, medical nutrition, with homeopathy, uh, with acupuncture, with all things holistic. And I'm a good person to talk to uh, to get an understanding and a good perspective on what's up with your health. Because from the proper perspective, everything makes sense, but the MDs do not bring the proper perspective to bear. They just don't. And, you know, I've, I've used this example before, but I'll use it again because it's, it's important to understand this. And people don't understand this basic concept, okay? You know, so... The, one of the reasons for the cognitive dissonance here, one of the reasons that people continue to put the MDs up on a pedestal, even though they fail us over and over and over again, in the province of Alberta, in Canada, they spend 45, it's between 45 and 50 million bucks a day, a day, to prop up the medical system. Well, why on earth is that? Because what's the most expensive type of medicine? The one that doesn't work, right? Right. But because it's a one-trick pony all around the world and the MDs rule the roost, that's all that the governments know. And, of course, the pharmaceutical companies are in cahoots with the government, and so everybody's in bed together, and they're not going to go away. But it's a problem. 
And, you know, the reason that they maintain the top dog status, even though they fail and fail and fail and are expensive as all get out, uh, is because in the back of our minds, we think that they um, actually practice uh, science, that they're actually scientific. Well, here's what we don't understand about science. Now, the MDs are scientific. So am I. My profession exists to marry the scientific method with alternatives to drugs and surgery for treatment, for medical treatment, right? So science is as science does, and science is a wonderful thing, but science is a harsh mistress. And unless you get it right, you're going to be in the dark. If you miss one datum point, you're in the dark. So let's say you didn't know anything about gravity, and you had no clue about gravity. You had no understanding whatsoever about gravitational attraction and that the greater the mass something has the more gravitational pull it has you had no understanding of that at all so that those data points relative to gravity were absent from your mind okay but you have um a hankering to understand uh meteorology uh and astronomy so every day um, you go outside and at noon you measure the angle of the sun in the sky. And then, you know, every hour starting after sunrise, you measure the angle of the sun in the sky. You have a, one of those sextants that the old time mariners used to use and you dial it right in and you write down all your calculations and all of your data. And over the course of 365 days, you, you gather monstrous amounts of data which show you where the sun is at any time in the sky. And so you collect all of that data, you process all of that data, and you can reasonably predict where the sun is going to be you know, at your latitude at any moment in time, and you'd be correct. But because you were missing the datum points, the data points of gravity, you would then make the inaccurate assumption that the sun goes around the Earth. I mean, I've got all the data to prove it. Look, I can tell you exactly where it's going to be. And look, stupid, it's the sun that's moving. It's not the Earth. What are you, stupid? I mean, any idiot can see it's the sun that's moving, right? But because you didn't know how big the sun was, how much mass the sun had, and because you didn't know how big the earth was, and because you had no earthly idea, pun intended, of what gravity was, your understanding and um, 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 assumption that the earth moves around the sun is incorrect, even though you have all of this data to support it. Get it? Well, that's how the MDs are with health. They have collected all of these data points, right, about, oh, you know, the, this blood level is associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and this um, x-ray is associated with osteoarthritis, and this ultrasound of the heart, uh, these findings are associated with uh, cardiomyopathy, heart disease, and so forth and so on. And they've got all of this mountains and reams of data, 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 right? They have all these complicated names for diseases. Lots of data. But they've lost or they're missing a very important datum point. The very important datum point is that the human body knows how to fix itself. The human body wants to fix itself. The human body is a complex system of interrelated parts, which is inhabited by a spiritual essence which brings intelligence to play. Our bodies are smart. Our bodies are imbued with divine spiritual intelligence. And this is not a religious conversation. This is a spiritual conversation. Whatever it is that brings light to your eyes, whatever it is that leaves the body at the moment of death, whatever it is, uh, consciousness itself, right? Th th there's a spiritual essence here that is immeasurable to modern science. And because nobody's dissected the soul out of the human body to the MD, it does not exist. Because according to reductionistic philosophy, which the MDs are trained in, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist.
So, to the MD, there's no spiritual force, there's no soul force, there's no intelligence, and consciousness is a function of biochemistry. And that when the body dies, it's lights out, everything's over, it's just nothingness. That the only, that your consciousness is a function of biochemistry, right? Every holistic physician in the world argues the, the alternate, that biochemistry is a function of consciousness. That consciousness comes first and the human body comes second, right? So, but in any event, because the MDs have thrown the baby out with the bathwater, because they have no ideation, no understanding, and no appreciation for the relationship of the body's intelligence to the maintenance and the, and the operation of the physical body, their conclusions about the genesis of the disease process are completely wrong. And this is why they move the goalposts all the time, right? You know, first they'll tell you that it's bad humors that cause disease, and then they're proven wrong. That's how George Washington was killed. They bled him to death. Because back in the day, the MDs thought that the only reason that people got sick was because of evil, bad humors in the body, and you could get those out of the body by bleeding the person. And that's why the one of the major medical journals in the world is called the Lancet, because that was the MDs' main tool. They just bled people. Oh, isn't that great? Well, no, as a matter of fact, it wasn't. So then Louis Pasteur comes along, and oh, it's all about germs, and that's the cause of disease, right? And then Watson and Crick come along, and they discover uh, the structure of DNA, and then, oh, it's all about genes, and genes are the root cause of all disease, and then that falls by the wayside. Uh, and now it's all about epigenetics, and, you know, first it's these blood pressure numbers that are healthy, and now it's these blood pressure numbers that are healthy, and now it's these blood sugar numbers that are healthy, and now it's this cholesterol number that's healthy, and they move the ball all of the time because their philosophy is based on the shifting sands of shoddy science the sifting sands of shoddy science. They have thrown the baby out with the bathwater by disregarding your body's built-in innate intelligence and, furthermore, by virtue of their education, the MD has no training, no experience, no respect, and quite frankly, no appreciation for the relationship between nutrition and disease. They don't know a damn thing about it. So... <clears throat> I mean, we've proven it uh, four times in the past, three times in the past. Uh, the disease rickets is caused by a vitamin D-like David deficiency. Uh, um, uh, 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 spina bifida is a folic acid deficiency. Uh, scurvy is a vitamin C deficiency. Uh, and, of course, Iron deficient anemia is an iron deficiency illness, right? So we know, and, and goiter are iodine deficiencies. So we know from a historical perspective that there is an intimate relationship between nutrient deficiencies and the genesis of the disease process. You would think that the MDs would want to focus on that and run with that ball, but they do not. They have no earthly idea at all of the relationship between nutrition and the genesis of disease. And lack of nutrition is the root cause of all chronic diseases. Lack of nutrition is the root cause of all chronic diseases. Linus Pauling said it best. Two-time Nobel Prize winner. You can trace every chronic disease back to a mineral deficiency. Period. So let's say that I'm correct and that heartburn is caused by a calcium deficiency and a deficiency in salt. If you have heartburn, you don't have a bad gene, you have a bad doctor, and you don't have enough calcium in your body and you don't have enough salt. If that's correct, then when you give your body salt and calcium, you should expect the heartburn symptoms to disappear and go away which is exactly what happens all of the time. But because the MD is not aware of this relationship, the MD gives antacids and proton pump inhibitors, and do those fix the nutrient deficiencies? No. They just manage the symptoms. I mean, you could give antibiotics and surgery and antibiotics and surgery and antibiotics and surgery to someone with scurvy, but they're going to die. You give them vitamin C, it goes away. And this is what we know and nobody else knows, and this is why everybody is sick. For goodness sake, if everybody recovered from type 2 diabetes in the United States, we'd balance the federal budget in one flippin' year.
Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Peter Glidden here, your steadfast advocate for health, taking it to the streets through the Internet. Uh, check out the live video stream, why don't you? The D-R-G-L-I-D-D-E-N show, the Dr. Glidden show dot TV. Kathy from... Um, Mississippi? M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I? <laughs> yes, sir. I just want to tell you such a joy and delight and a great, great blessing, Dr. Glidden. I just thank you so much for what you do. Oh, Kathy, that's very kind of you. Um, I appreciate the, the positive strokes always. Um, I'm so glad you called. How can I help? My most precious dear friend, who is 63 years old, is having much trouble breathing. And when she lays down, she says it feels like water is filling her back and lungs, and it makes it more difficult even to breathe. She also has high blood pressure and extreme difficulty sleeping and is constantly fatigued, exhausted, and catches flu-like and virus symptoms often. She also has difficulty walking due to a serious knee injury and surgery the doctor blotched, and her feet hurt her constantly, making it almost impossible at times to walk. Her thyroid activity is basically nil, the doctor says. Her heart and chest hurt. She suffers memory loss and confusion at times, being unable to understand where she is at the moment and how to go where she was going. Also, her throat has no visible lumps or bumps, but when she swallows, she can always feel the invisible lumps bumps. Her throat hurts and feels uncomfortable. After drinking Longevity 90 for Life liquid minerals, her throat feels better within about 30 minutes. She has had headaches all her life, even migraines, until relief lately on Beyond Tangy Tangerine Peach Fusion and Osteo FX and Glucogel. Praise God and Longevity forever for such products for relief. What other products does she need, please, sir? She weighs about 235 pounds and is 5 feet 3 inches. Thank well, you so much for advising us. I'm all right, Kathy, all right. You're, all right, so look, th- th- we need to not overlook the obvious here, right? I mean, this woman's been under the care of conventional medical doctors her entire life. She's been paying medical insurance premiums her entire life. Yes. Uh, you know, Social Security stuff, you know, Medicare. I mean, and, and she's the poster child for a complete and utter failure of the medical system because while she's been under the care of the MDs, her health has gone to hell in a handbasket. It has. And it's not her fault. It's her medical doctor's fault because somebody's got to be at fault. And whose fault is it? Well, it's the people that are in charge of her health care. For goodness sakes. I don't know why we just can't all rally around this flag and just call a spade a spade. If you are in a state of ill health, it's your doctor's fault. Somebody has to be responsible for that. And it's our medical care practitioners because they don't practice health care. They practice disease management. This is what you get when you manage disease. You get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So, you know, this sounds to me like congestive heart failure. Have Has she told you that they ruled that out? No, sir. All right. So we need, first of all, we need to know what we're up against. And, you know, honestly, I'm not that impressed, quite frankly, with the diagnostic capability of most of the MDs that I've met. But every once in a while, you'll get a smart MD who knows their game and who is a good diagnostician. This sounds to me uh, like uh, congestive heart failure. It could also be a pneumonia condition. or She needs to get that figured out and dialed in. So she needs to get uh, this lung filling up with water sensation figured out post-haste. Because if it is pneumonia, uh, we have to intervene in a certain way. And if it's congestive heart failure, we go another way. Uh, but in any event, the stuff that she's done so far is producing results. And so we just need to tighten up the program a little bit uh, and see if we can't get a little more leverage with her health and wellness here. So what my recommendation would be for her overall um, you know, nutritional support for her body would be uh, two um, uh, healthy start pack 2.0 liquids two healthy start pack 2.0 liquids per month two healthy start pack 2.0 in the liquid form per month four bottles of ultimate selenium per month one bottle of ultimate daily capsules per month 
and one, two, three, four, five bottles of liquid glucogel plus per month. Five bottles of liquid glucogel plus per month. And I'd also like her to see her on uh, the root beer belly. Uh, I'd like her to take uh, two boxes of root beer belly a month. I'd like her to take one box of root beer belly at night before bed and one box of root beer belly first thing in the morning. And last but not least, de-stress. One bottle of D, like David, stress uh, per month. Of course, eliminate the 10 bad foods, salt her food appropriately, and eat a diet that is extremely high in cholesterol. Keep your fingers Got crossed. A So uh, just the other day, I showed my IT people my uh, empty coffee mug, and I told them I just finished installing Java. <laughs> Let's go to Florida and talk to Graciella. That's a pretty name. Hey, Graciella, thanks for the phone call. You are live. Hi, Dr. Graydon. Thank you so much for taking my call. What's happening? Uh, I've been taking uh, the Health Star Pack plus uh, a bottle of selenium a month for three months now. And one thing that I would like to know is for my vision, which is just like blurry when I try to read a book, you know, and is there anything else I could take or if I just keep taking that, uh, eventually we'll get better? Hopefully. Well, I've, Dr. Wallach, was able to change his prescription in his son, in his eyeglasses um, because his vision got better while on the medical nutrition. He still needs glasses, but his vision got better. So you never know how far back the vision's going to come, you know, unless... So the reason that people can you know see things at a distance and, and or and not read up close or be able to read up close but not see things at a distance or whatever is because the muscles around your eyes get weak and it's interesting to talk about this is a fascinating part of anatomy but and it's it's kind of a uh, uh, you know it's a, a ghoulish metaphor uh, or it's a ghoulish example but it, you know if you dissect somebody's head you know, after they're dead, <laughs> and look at, and look at the anatomy of the eye. The eyeball is surrounded by these tiny muscles, and some they're like small as elastic bands. They're the smallest muscles in your body, and it's the muscles, of course, that make your eyes move. You know, that make you able to look to the side, look up, look down. But there are also muscles that wrap around the eyeball, which squeeze the eyeball and focus it. And so when those, and it's a muscle, I mean, just like any other muscle in the body, and muscles can get weak for whatever reason, and so you can also strengthen the muscles, right? You know, that's how bodybuilders get giant muscles. It's because they do specific exercises to strengthen specific muscle groups. Well, in addition to medical nutrition, which is a, you know, mandatory thing to do to support eye health, right? Right. There, is a series of exercises that people can do, the intention of which is to specifically strengthen the eye muscles. Yeah, pretty interesting. The same way you know you do push-ups or sit-ups, well, there's things you can do to exercise your eye muscles. Pretty cool. Honestly, I don't know why more people don't know about this, but there was a, a doctor, I think, in the 50s or the 60s, he wrote a book called The Bates method of vision recovery b-a-t-e-s b like baby a t like thomas e-s the bates method of vision recovery uh go to amazon.com do a search for that book i think it's out of print um, but if you can find yourself a copy it walks you right through specific eye exercises that you can do you know for five or ten minutes every day and if you do that i would expect your vision to improve dramatically. Um, I've always wanted to try that, but for some reason, I just have never been able to dial in the discipline to get that done. You know, I've too, got too many other things to do, or at least that's a mental excuse that I put up. So I'd be very interested to find uh, what somebody's experience was with the diligent application of the Bates method in addition to longevity. So if I were you, Grace, Graciella, that's what I would do. Okay. 
Right. I actually heard that this book is uh, went out of print because they it was really working, and the doctors <laughs> didn't like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. uh, you know, yeah, uh, that's probably um, there's probably a lot of truth in that. Um, so I would I'd hunt around. Um, you know, go to the longevity support groups on Facebook. Um, uh, go to uh, uh, Amazon.com. You know, use the web to try to dial in a copy. Uh, I don't have a copy. Otherwise, I'd lend it to you. Um, but in any event, if you can find a copy of that book, go for it and uh, let me know what happens. Right. I just sent down to. I'm from Brazil. I just sent to my brother because he had a detached retina. So I saw one of your yeah. um, videos about that, and I sent that package for him according to his body weight. So I'm curious to see what's going to do to his eyes because he ended up actually having a surgery because the yeah. doctors just terrorize him, say, if you don't do it today, you're never going to see again. Yeah, I know. So he, he did. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. <laughs> Well, me too. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. And, you know, I think people in Brazil need a little bit of good news right now, huh? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about it. It's a touchy subject right now. <laughs> oh, come on now. What part of Brazil are you from? I'm from Belo Horizonte, which is uh, Central West. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I've, I've, I've long time ago, I, I dated a, a woman from Brazil, and she spoke very little English, and I tried to learn Portuguese. I couldn't do it, though. It's a real, I find Portuguese a very, very difficult language, and I think anybody that's bilingual, and, you know, one of the languages is Portuguese, I, you know, I have a lot of respect for that, because I'm telling you, man, it is not the easiest language in the world to learn. No, even for us, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. All right, um, st keep us posted as to what uh, transpires here, and uh, I'll look forward to it. Thanks so much for the phone call. New York is up next. Looks like Rosie wants to talk to us. Hey, Rosie, thanks for the phone call. You are live. Good afternoon. I was referred to you from a coach named Cosmo. Oh, and yeah. I <laughs> I have two situations. I fell down the stairs. They said I have an ACL tear and meniscus tear where the main ligaments were making for divot that is completely severed. And oh. I wanted to know what to do concerning that. And um, I went through cancer and chemo radiation, and that's gone. Praise the Lord. So I'm on the road for, you know, better managing my my um my health I guess and I went to diabetes and I want to manage my health and for my grandson um, okay so do you do you have diabetes or does your grandson me they diagnosed me with uh, diabetes as well. type 2 right yeah Okay, so we have a lot of success with um, optimizing blood sugar levels in the human body with medical nutrition. Uh, there was research published in 1958 that proved there was a direct relationship between a mineral called chromium and um, funky blood sugar. Like if the body did not have enough of the mineral chromium, then type 2 diabetes would develop. And if you put the chromium back in the body, the type 2 diabetes went away. Um, so we've been, uh, uh, you know, at, at the tip of the spear of educating people about the relationship between medical nutrition and healthy blood sugar levels. Now, we don't make any claims, um, but it is my clinical experience that um, medical nutrition um, is a drop dead positive, uh, develops drop dead positive results with blood sugar that you can measure objectively with lab work so in order to get that job done so the reg how much do you weigh i'm 243 how much how, I need to pay? how tall are you five six yeah so you're about 100 pounds overweight right but I have big bones. If I'm skinny, I look, I look real. I look, you would not. All right, so you're 50 pounds overweight. And look, it's not your fault. Um, it, the reason that people gain weight 
It's not because you're lazy. It's not because you don't exercise. It's not because you have a bad gene. It's not because your stomach's too big. It's not because you, you, of anything other than your medical doctor is an idiot, and they have no idea what's going on. The only thing that makes people gain weight is we eat too many calories. And it's the only thing. I mean, there was nobody in the death camps of World War II that was overweight. Nobody. It doesn't matter what their health condition was. It doesn't matter their age, their sex, their pre-existing health condition or whatever. If you don't eat, you lose weight, period. So if you gain weight, it's because of too many calories and consistent consumption of food that causes inflammation. So what makes people eat too many calories? Their bodies are nutritionally starved. Your body has wisdom. The MDs don't understand this, but your body does have wisdom. Your body knows that it's running low on calcium. It knows it's running low on magnesium and zinc and vitamin A and vitamin B and vitamin C. And when your body recognizes that its nutritional tank is running on empty, it makes you eat in the desperate attempt uh, to fill the nutritional tank up. But the nutritional, the food that you're eating doesn't have the nutrients that your body needs so your body drives you to eat a lot of food and you do eat a lot of food but because there's no nutrition in the food four hours later you're hungry again and so we eat too many calories every day not because we're lazy not because we have the fat gene but because our bodies are nutritionally starved and nobody knows it except us now interestingly enough nutritional deficiencies are also related to blood sugar issues so you have nutrient deficiencies you have chronic undiagnosed nutrient deficiencies you've had them your whole life and they are in my opinion at the root cause of everything that's bothering you now the you know ligaments and tendons right have a breaking point i mean even superman had a breaking point right so you can apply a certain amount of stress to a ligament tendon bone or joint the bone's going to break the ligament's going to tear the tendons the tendon's going to rip no matter how strong or healthy it is so sometimes ligament and tendon damage is just life right it was too much stress to the ligament tendon and it ripped or tore you know you're in an automobile accident or whatever but other times the ligaments and tendons tear not because the stress was too much but because they were weak to begin with and you know a little bit of stress made them tear or rip whereas if they were healthy that would not have happened but if it's a complete tear there's nothing that's going to fix that besides surgery if it's a complete tear if it's a partial tear you can fix that with medical nutrition if it's a complete tear, then the only thing that's going to fix that is surgery. However, the surgery is not going to address whether or not the ligament or tendon was weak in the first place. So it would be prudent for you for five or six months to give your body uh, nutritional support for the ligaments and tendons in addition to comprehensive nutritional support you know, for your weight and your blood sugar. Um, because, you know, your ligaments and tendons probably are weak. Um, and that's probably why they popped. So, at your body weight... I fell down the stairs. How many, how many, how many stairs? Uh, ten. Yeah, ten. So, that's, you know, it was probably that. Um, so, all right. So, here's what I'm, what I'm going to recommend you do for, uh, 90 days. Uh, and then you want to look to see um, what gets better. And so your weight and your blood sugar, your energy, your mood, your sleep, your appetite, your sex drive, everything right across the board because it's a comprehensive, holistic intervention. So the recommendation for you would be um, two healthy <clears throat> body start pack 2.0. Two healthy body start packs 2.0 in the liquid form. It's a long name, I know. It's called the Healthy Body Start Pack 2.0 in the liquid form. You need two of those. Uh, you need uh, three bottles of Ultimate Sweeties. Sweeties. Three bottles of Sweeties and four bottles of Selenium. Four Selenium, three Sweeties, and two Healthy Start Pack 2.0 in the liquid form. Yeah, man. That's how we do it. Here's what I want you to do. Go to drglidden.com. 
drglidden.com, become an insider, click on the Be an Insider tab, check out the details of my online uh, subscription service. Yeah, as an insider, you'll have access to over 100 hours of archived health webinars that will, will under explain to you from the naturopathic point of view, from the holistic point of view, why these diseases develop and how the MDs think they develop and how we think they develop and how the MDs uh, manage it and what we recommend to treat it. Uh, what we recommend to do to support and promote your body's ability to optimize its structure and function. Because knowledge is ultimately power and in this case, um, life saving information. Rosie had one more question, I think. Hey, Rosie, uh, yeah, I think you had uh, one more thing you wanted to talk about. Yeah, my grandson, they, uh, they, uh, he have arts, they said he have autism. He hasn't spoken one word and he's, going on to be five soon. Yeah. So we believe autism is a birth defect caused by bad nutrition in the blood of the pregnant mother. And in that regard, it's the obstetrician's fault because it's the obstetrician's job to make the mother healthy during pregnancy. But that's impossible to do unless you have a grounding in clinical nutrition, which the obstetrician does not. And because the obstetrician doesn't know anything about uh, new-fashioned, uh, science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition, the obstetrician's advice will be old-fashioned, outdated, and ineffective, and that's why there's so much autism. We also believe it's related to chronic wheat consumption by the younger generation. The younger generation eats wheat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and wheat is a big bad voodoo daddy. Wheat consumption, gluten consumption uh, specifically, uh, hampers the body's ability to absorb nutrients. The food that we eat doesn't have enough nutrients in it anyway. So the more whole grains somebody eats, the less nutrified their body becomes, and then they get pregnant. The child is growing up inside an under-nutrified uh, environment and is born with some type of a birth defect or on the autism spectrum, which we believe is a birth defect caused by bad nutrition in the blood of the pregnant mother. It's not the mother's fault because it's not the mother's job to know this. It's the doctor's job to know this. So, you know, it's called the autism spectrum for a reason. And sometimes uh, children that are autistic, when we clean their diet up and give their body the proper nutrition, that there's remarkable improvement. Sometimes there's a little bit of improvement, and sometimes there is a medium amount of improvement. You never know. The child's body needs nutrients anyway, so this is kind of like never fail fudge. So the recommendation is for both the mother and the child, right, the both, everybody in this family needs to stop eating the 10 bad foods. Everybody in the family needs to stop eating the 10 bad foods. That list is free on my website drglidden.com. They all need to stop eating the 10 bad foods. The child needs to eat a diet that's high in cholesterol. And the best way to do that is with eggs, chicken eggs, quail eggs, duck eggs. I don't care. Eggs, butter, not margarine. Eggs, butter, salt. Uh, food that's high in cholesterol would be beneficial to this child because his brain is made from cholesterol and his body needs more. Now, once we've got the food stuff dialed in, the child also needs nutrition. And if he were my child, what I would give him is one healthy brain and heart pack uh, and one selenium, one healthy brain and heart pack and one selenium uh, and one bottle of cherry mints, one healthy brain and heart pack, one selenium and one bottle of cherry mints per 100 pounds of body weight per month, eliminate the 10 bad foods, eat a diet that's high in cholesterol, and pray for success. Never hurts to, uh, you know, get a little bit of divine assistance in every walk of your life. And like the fella said, if you don't ask, it ain't going to happen. I'm Dr. Peter Glidden, your steadfast advocate for health, thanking you again for spending two hours of your day with me. I hope you learned something. I do every time from you, the callers. Remember, this is a grassroots coalition of the informed. We need to hold each other up, 
and lift our families, friends, church members, and communities into the undiscovered country of medical nutrition. Live long and prosper.